So although her writing was actually beautiful, there was no story underneath those beautiful words. So there was no deeper meaning or anything really compelling enough to pull the reader or those agents into the story and make them interested in what happens next. Welcome to the Fiction Writing Made Easy podcast. My name is Savannah Gilbo, and I'm here to help you write a story that works. I want to prove to you that writing a novel doesn't have to be overwhelming. So each week, I'll bring you a brand new episode with simple, actionable, and step-by-step strategies that you can implement in your writing right away. So whether you're brand new to writing or more of a seasoned author looking to improve your craft, this podcast is for you. So pick up a pen and let's get started. In today's episode, I want to talk about something really important. We're going to talk about what I see as the biggest myth that holds a lot of writers back. And then we're going to talk about what to do about it if you're a believer in this myth and if it's negatively impacting your writing life. But before we dive in and talk about what this myth is, I'm going to describe to you a few scenarios and I want you to see which one or or which ones you identify with. Actually, we're going to play a mini game of have you ever. So you guys will have to let me know which of these three scenarios you identify with the most. So let's start with scenario number one. Have you ever been really excited about writing a book until it actually comes time to sit down and write? And then when you do sit down to write and if you somehow manage to push past that initial overwhelm, have you ever written and then rewritten the same pages over and over and over again without making any kind of forward progress? Scenario number two. Have you ever looked to your favorite book for guidance or inspiration because you just love them so much and the writing is so beautiful and you could go on and on all day about how wonderful it is? But then when you go back to your own story, you start to feel kind of inadequate or like your own writing would never measure up to the writing in your favorite book. Scenario number three. Have you ever finished a draft and then felt completely scared to share your work with somebody else like a beta reader or an editor or even a friend? Have you ever felt like if you could just polish up your sentences a little more or if you could just think of some more creative metaphors, then maybe you'd get a beta reader or work with an editor or show your family members your story? You guys are going to have to let me know what scenario you relate to the most or if you relate to more than one because I think a lot of people are going to relate to more than one. And as you listen to each of those scenarios, did you start to see any kind of pattern or common thread that ran through each of them? Because that common thread is what we're going to talk about in today's episode. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, I kind of got this feeling of perfectionism, or this sounds like perfectionism. And in a way, I guess you could say that, but I think the myth is something a little more specific than that. Because as I've worked with writers of all skill levels in all three of those scenarios that I just mentioned... They all share one damaging belief. And that belief is that if you can write beautiful words or beautiful sentences, then that's what makes you a real writer or that's what's going to make readers fall in love with your story. And what that really means is that they believe beautiful sentences or beautiful words are more important than anything else. And that's just not true. So before we get any further, I want to tell you about somebody I worked with recently who almost gave up on her writing after sending her manuscript out to agents and getting zero bites. So this writer I worked with, she reached out to me after having worked on her manuscript for years and years, and after having spent thousands of dollars on line editing and copy editing to really polish up her manuscript before submitting it to agents. And then when she finally did send off her story to agents, she didn't get a single bite. And as you can probably imagine, she was absolutely heartbroken. So after not getting any bites from agents or publishers, she decided to show some of her friends, a few of her chapters, and they were really surprised too that she didn't get any bites because they all said that her story was really well written. So fast forward to about a year later and this person's story just wouldn't leave her alone. Even though she was devastated by the fact that not one single agent requested a partial or a full manuscript, the story was just still hanging around, still on her mind all the time, and she just couldn't let it go. So eventually we got in touch and she said to me, I really love this story but I've had no luck with agents or publishers, and even though it's probably not very good, I just want to get a second opinion about it, and I want to see if you think there's anything I can do to fix it. I think I'm looking for either some confirmation that I should keep trying or some confirmation that I should just give up on this writing thing altogether because maybe I don't really have what it takes to be a writer. 
in you guys. Even reading that to you right now makes me so sad because so many people feel the same way that this writer did. So eventually I read through her manuscript and her line by line writing was actually really beautiful and really polished. And she did have a lot of talent and a unique and lovely writing voice. So what was the problem? Like why didn't any agents or publishers wanna see her manuscript or publish her book? And here's the thing. So although her writing was actually beautiful, there was no story underneath those beautiful words. So there was no deeper meaning or anything really compelling enough to pull the reader or those agents into the story and make them interested in what happens next. Now, let me tell you the best part of this story. So I told this writer everything I just told you, and she dedicated herself to learning how to craft a story. So she dug in and learned all the fundamentals. She learned how to write a compelling narrative with well-rounded characters and a really wonderful underlying message. She added structure and purpose to her scenes, and then she trimmed out anything that wasn't necessary or that didn't add to the story. And then a year later, when she pitched her story at a writing conference, she got four bites from agents on her manuscript. And just the other day, she emailed me saying that she signed a contract with a publisher. And I don't tell you this story for any other reason than to show you that had this writer stuck with the belief that beautiful words are what makes a good writer or what makes a good story, then she would have never had any luck with agents or publishers. And from the sound of it, she probably would have given up on her writing completely. And she's not alone in feeling that way or thinking that way because I talk to writers that have similar stories all the time. So where does this insidious myth come from? Or why do we believe that you have to write beautiful sentences or beautiful words in order to write a great story or to be a quote unquote real writer? Mostly I think this happens because we're so used to looking at someone else's finished product and comparing our little nugget of an idea or our messy pages to someone's polished final draft that's often been made extra beautiful by editors and proofreaders and cover designers and all the people that are involved in getting that book out into the world. And I mean, this comparing of our own work to someone's final or published work is really hard not to do, right? I mean, I'm still guilty of doing this myself sometimes. Like the second I start thinking about all the world building and the subplots and the amazing magic system in the Harry Potter series, I start kind of feeling overwhelmed and a little bit inadequate. Or when I reread The Name of the Wind for the billionth time, I sometimes agonize over not being able to write the type of beautiful lyrical sentences that Patrick Rothfuss does. And no joke, you guys, some of those sentences give me happy tears because that book is just so darn beautiful. So what's my point in all of this? Well, my point is that this happens to everybody at one time or another, and there is a solution or a fix to this. So the first thing we need to do to kind of combat this myth is to be aware of what we're doing and aware of what we believe. So that means you need to stop comparing your work in progress to someone else's finished draft or to someone else's published book. And of course, you can still use other people's books to study for educational purposes or even for inspiration. But I want you to realize that their finished book or even their finished draft and your draft in progress or your little nugget of an idea are completely different things. And then second, I want you to understand that although readers do appreciate beautiful writing, the beautiful writing is not what keeps a reader engaged with the story and makes them want to find out what happens next. It's the actual story underneath those words or the meaning of the story that really hooks readers and brings those beautiful words to life. Lisa Cron actually talks about this in her story Genius book. She says, it's like holding a conversation with someone when you have nothing to say. And no matter how beautiful the language is that you use, it's basically meaningless. And it pretty much stops being beautiful and starts to become annoying when the other person has to spend all of their mental energy trying to figure out what the heck you're talking about or if there's even a point to anything you're saying. And I'm sure you guys have had conversations like that with people. So that's what it's like when you write something that's full of beautiful words, but there's no story or there's no meaning underneath it. So that means that the first step we need to take when it comes to writing a novel, we need to unearth the story before we worry about the pretty writing. So like what's the meaning behind everything you're writing or why should the reader care about what you're writing? Like what do you have to say? And then once you know what your story is about, 
you need to figure out how to take that story and shape it into something that's going to take readers on some kind of emotional journey because you want to give them an emotional experience that they're coming to your story for. And then once you've done that, and really only once you've done that, do beautiful words or beautiful sentences actually matter? So that means you're going to need to give yourself the permission to write a first draft that isn't full of pretty words. And the way to do this is to understand what a story really is. And that might sound kind of weird because, I mean, we've all read books and consumed movies, right? Um, But writing a story is something that's completely different. Because I'm sure that a lot of you have watched the Olympics before and recognize that these people are great athletes and super talented, but you've never gone off and expected to show up on a field or a stage and do the same thing that these Olympic athletes did, right? So it's kind of the same thing with stories. You can know and feel what a good story is, whether that's because you're judging it by the sales it brings in or how it makes you feel or how much the fans love it, you know, whatever it is. But to write a story like that is just a completely different matter. So to boil a story down into its most simple definition looks like this. A story is about how what happens externally affects someone who's in pursuit of a difficult goal and how they change internally as a result. So let me say that one more time. A story is about how what happens externally affects someone who's in pursuit of a difficult goal and how they change internally as a result. And if you step back and think about it, that's what most readers love about stories, right? They like to follow the protagonist's journey and their internal struggle as they face the external events of the plot because they want to see how he or she reacts and how they deal with this kind of stuff and how they ultimately need to change in order to accomplish their goals. So that means you can't just think about the external plot events of your story, but you also need to consider how those external events affect your character and how they force him or her to make an internal change. And as an example, I want you guys to think about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because in that story and in that whole series, there's a ton of amazing world building and fantastic beasts and magic and all of that. But the story works and it stays with us because of how it makes us feel. We meet Harry Potter when he is an orphan boy living with his horrible aunt and uncle and a cousin who bullies him. And then when he finds out he's a wizard and that he has a place at a magical school, We feel his nervousness and his insecurity around being the boy who lived as well as his longing to finally belong somewhere because he's never felt that sense of belonging with the Dursleys. And who can't relate to kind of feeling nervous or insecure or like they want to belong somewhere special? I mean, I for sure can relate to that. And then as Harry finds his place at Hogwarts and he starts to accept his place in the world as the one who's destined to defeat Voldemort, we see him really grow and change. And if we didn't have this underlying sense of that internal conflict and that internal change in Harry, the other more surfacey things like the world building wouldn't capture our attention and our hearts in the same way. So long story short, or the lesson here is that great writing comes from great stories, not the other way around. So to wrap up today's episode, I want you to remember these three things. First and most importantly, story always comes first not beautiful words or sentences. And when you're writing your first draft or even your second or your third, I want you to focus on creating a compelling story that shows how the external events of the plot affect your protagonist, causing them to change internally as a result. Second, I want you to remember that your draft in progress or your little nugget of an idea is not comparable to someone's final draft or their published book. These are all separate things that represent individual parts of the process, and they can't and really shouldn't be compared. And lastly, if you feel like you need someone to give you permission to write a messy first draft, then consider this your permission. Go write a draft that doesn't have beautiful words or sentences or the perfect metaphors, and instead spend your time focusing on the story first, because that's what's going to help you have the kind of lasting impact on readers that you're probably hoping for. And as a bonus for today's episode, I created a freebie that has three questions you can ask yourself before you start writing any story. And these three questions will help you drill down to what your story is really about so that you can write a better and more productive first draft. 
To get your hands on that freebie, you can head over to savannagilbo.com forward slash myth. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed what we talked about and I hope that this episode helps to inspire you and to motivate you to get started on that draft you've been thinking about starting or to keep moving forward with whatever you're working on. So that's it for today's show. As always, I wanna thank you so much for tuning in and showing your support. If you wanna check out any of the links I mentioned in this episode, you can find them over at savannagilbo.com forward slash podcast. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the show because there's going to be another brand new episode coming out next week. If you're an Apple user, I'd really appreciate it if you took a few seconds to leave a quick rating and review. Your ratings and reviews tell iTunes that this is a podcast that's worth listening to. And in turn, that helps this show get in front of more fiction writers just like you. So that's it for today's show. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Until then, happy writing.